Get it, Mr. Root? Yeah. Very good. Any so question? You can work on two databases at the same time. If you open two Absolutely. Two That's the whole point. Yeah. Right. Right. Export. Yes, you can do that. All right. I think I've beat this. Going to a different door for home like you started. You said yes. Home equals path. Five. Five. You said go to a different Oracle home. Yeah, but I'm going to do that. But yes, it'll be export Oracle underscore home equals the path. Yes. Equals the path of that new home that you're trying to go to. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you want to go to Oracle home underscore blah, 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 Oracle app. Um, slash app Oracle product 11.2 DB home 2 right you're in 3 now you want to go to 2 you do export Oracle capital Oracle underscore home equals the path DB home underscore 2 right press enter then you do echo what Oracle underscore home to verify that okay this is the house that I'm in just let's verify then once you now do SQL plus slash assist DBA then whatever home is, whatever database is inside that home We'll be there. Yes. Now, when you have like one home can have two data browser. Right? Yes. Now, if, if you echo, then take that path, which has that two data base. So which one are you going to use? Good question. Export. Yeah, export. Export. It. They have the same path. Ex yes. Yeah. Export. Okay. Export. Oracle underscore SID equals whatever, whichever database you want to go to. Same thing. <laughs> you get it now? You guys are getting it? You still find it sinking in? We're so off topic, but I, I kind of felt the, the urge to clarify this. Right? I kind of felt the urge that some, maybe some of you guys were, were getting a little bit confused, right? It's all good. We'll slow it down a little bit. All right, let's move. To what we're about to finally teach. All right. So last class. All right. All right. Any other questions on this? No other questions. All right. So last class, I taught you guys about what the physical structure. Right. I also taught you about the logical structure. Right. Ah. Now I'm going to teach you guys about the what? Memory structure. Woohoo! Memory structure. Mm. Memory structure. Everybody, one thing that you're gonna, you're gonna need to understand is this, right? Listen to me. One thing you're gonna need to understand is this. The memory structure is divided into two parts. The memory structure is divided into two, into two parts. SGA and PGA. SGA and PGA, do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys remember, but when you're creating a database, there's a part where it says typical or custom. I don't know if you guys remember, yeah. right? They could ask you this on the interview. In relation to size, what is the percentage that the PGA is to the SGA, right? It is always one third, a third, right? But first of all, what exactly is this SGA? When we say SGA, what exactly are we talking about? System global area. System global area. When we're talking about the SGA, we're talking about memory now. We're talking about memory. Do you understand what I'm saying? Memory, memory, memory. Memory, memory, memory. Right? We're talking about memory. Why is memory so important? Did I speak about memory at all last class? I didn't speak about memory at all. All right, very good. Let's say we have two little kids. You say one is smarter than the other. What exactly are we saying? 
Mr. Roots. Repeat that again. If we say that we have two kids, okay. one kid is smarter than the other. What exactly are we saying? So one can retain more information. Very good. One can retain more information. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it any better. Not only one can retain more information, one can regurgitate more information faster. Right? When you go buy a laptop, what's the first thing that you're going to want to know? How much memory do you have? Not necessarily the disk space. That's not really, oh, you need disk space. Yes, I agree. But when we're talking about the speed and efficiency with which you get data back, oh, make no mistake, memory is God. Memory. The more memory you have, the faster you can get your information back. But now the question really becomes, what is really going on when we talk about something is faster? What is really, really going on? Right? What do you mean that is faster? Watch this. Hmm. Nine times, nine times, 10 times out of 10, right? 10 times out of 10. Oracle, listen, Oracle is very, very lazy, right? Oracle is all about efficiency. Oracle would rather get stuff from memory than have to get stuff from the operating system. At the end of the day, right, where does all the data reside? At the end of the day, where's all my data? On the operating system, right? It's got to be somewhere, right? The way it works is this, right? Every time you guys do a select statement, the first time, right? As a matter of fact, let's branch into this right now. I think it's very important that you guys actually understand this. They've asked me this on an interview question. They said, can you tell me what exactly happens when you do a select statement? Oh my goodness. If you write this down, you're gonna be so good. No taking time. Number one. When you do a select statement from a table, we're talking about, everybody, everything we're talking about right now is SGA. We're not, we're not talking about S, um, um, PGA yet. Everything we're talking about right now is SGA. And SGA stands for what? System Global Area, right? This is the big memory. The PGA, the Oracle gives you, let's say Oracle gives you 100, right? The SGA will account for 66% of the memory. PGA is one third of it, right? So the SGA is the most important. Right? SGA is talk we're talking about memory now. So watch this. Every time you do a brand new select, not just a select, a brand new select, these are the phases that Oracle goes through, right, in, in relation to memory before it actually gets you your data. Number one, it checks for syntax errors. It checks for syntax errors. First of all, is is what this idiot, is he, is this fool, is he, did he even type it right? Right? If he didn't type it right, uh, it just stops right there. Number one, checks for syntax errors. Number two. It checks for user permissions. Now, does this guy, okay, syntax error, okay, syntax looks fine, but watch this. Does this guy even have permissions to even access what he's trying to access? That's the second thing that it checks. No problem. That's the second thing that it checks. Both of these, number one and number two, is what we call the parsing phase. Parsing phase. Parsing. Parsing, to parse, P-A-R-S-I-N-G, to parse, parsing phase.
And both of these occur in your data dictionary cache. I'll explain all this later. Your data dictionary cache. Number three. The SQL statement is turned or converted into a numeric hash value which will be used to execute and fetch the data. No, which we use to execute and fetch the data. We're talking about one, every time you do a select star or a select whatever, the first time, a brand new select statement. Brand new select statement. Right? This, is, this takes place in the library cache. The library cache. This hash value does not stay in there forever. It will eventually age out. Write that down. If not used. This hash value does not stay in memory forever. It will eventually age out if not used. Don't worry, I'll explain. Number four. The SQL statement then executes. This is called the execution phase. This number four. The SQL statement then is executed. This is called the execution phase. Number five, the data is retrieved from the table. Well, the data is retrieved from the table. Retrieved from the table. This is called the fetching phase. And then to sum up, to write this down. So if a select statement is invoked by a user, this is to sum up everything. Write this down. If a select statement is invoked by a user, right? Then a user and a server process is invoked as well. If a, when a select statement is performed, then a user and a server process are invoked.